All right, welcome everybody. I am here with 40. Once again, we're doing a deck profile for the Warrior uh, Lorraine today. And um, we've got a very interesting deck uh, profile coming this time. I, I really am so excited to see what we have uh, cooked up for this character because uh, from what I understand, this is one of your uh, one of your main characters you play, correct? Yeah, I've played Win Lorraine for a number of tournaments. The build I bring is definitely not stable because it shifts around a lot. This one's probably a bit more experimental because it was after the Sylvie update, so I was trying a few more things, but I do like Lorraine. She's very, especially in Win, she's very uh, kind of mid-rangey and adaptable, so you can kind of your way around a lot of things so very exciting and i've had a lot of success i've won a number of tournaments with her so all righty so let's start off with the uh, material deck this time um yeah. and, and let's do like a little bit of an intro uh, who is um who is lorraine and uh for those that are the uninitiated and what what can they uh, look for in this champion at their uh, level uh level one state all right so lorraine the big thing about Lorraine is that uh, she uses her her play revolves a lot around uh, her swords. Uh, you'll see that through a lot of her kit. Um, so for level one, she gets uh, a free when she comes in. She brings in a free level zero sword. There's only two swords in the game right now, but both of them I would say are pretty good. One of them I would say is a lot stronger than the other, but the sword represents a, a way to basically put out free damage and also modify your attacks to be bigger, which can help you clear annoying minions. And also, uh, depending if you go fire or wind, you can like put really big damage. Winds hits a little softer, but has more tricks. Fire, you can, uh, I think uh, people like fire because uh, sometimes you can put out like 16 damage in one turn or something crazy. Um, or actually one card. One card can do 16 damage if you're crazy, if you, if you really set it up. Stuff like that. Um, so the level one brings out one of your key swords. Your level two is ultra important. Uh, Lorraine, unlike some of the other ones, the, the turn you level up to level two, you really want to do something special. So when she comes in um, on enter, she gets plus two attack power for that turn. And if she kills anything, you draw a card. Uh, the key thing to, to note about this is this is an on enter thing, and it'll stick around even if she goes to level three in that turn. So you can double dip on this maybe if you uh, dungeon guide it, which a lot of times you probably are wanting to do. Uh, the two attack is a little bit tricky though because you need to be able to attack that turn. Just because you have two plus two attack value, you still need to have either a weapon or an attack card in order to take advantage of that two damage. So uh, you, turn you go into level two, you better have a weapon or you better have an attack in hand. Uh, and then if you're when you get to level three, um, she unlocks her her advanced element uh, crux, which is there's a lot of powerful cards, but uh, I tend to run less of them because Lorraine I feel like can do a lot of stuff early, and at the end she's just kind of trying to finish out the game. Uh, but her three is very powerful, as you can see. Her attacks get plus one for each regalia weapon card and banishment. So let's say you have like five swords in your material deck. If you've used them throughout the deck, I mean the game, they're in the banishment. That means any attack has base five power plus whatever is printed on it. So that's like a huge attack, especially at the end of the game where you're probably just needing to do like, I don't know, eight damage or something maybe or, or less. Uh, and you can make for really big attacks. And also, um, she's also the character that can do right now the biggest board sweeps because uh, this plus two applies to any like um, cleaving attack. So, like let's say you have uh, in this deck you have a hurricane sweep, which is like only one attack, but one plus two plus maybe one more or two more from your weapon. That's four across the board, and then you're drawing cards for everything you kill. It's, uh, a lot of card advantage. You can do a lot of stuff. Or if you kill something, draw a card, dungeon guide into level three, you can attack again. You still have the attack bonus and you can kill more stuff. Or or kill your opponent. So what I've understood with uh with, and only with the demo decks with uh Lorraine is that you're wanting to hold off on leveling up until you're kinda needing to. 
Um, mm -hmm. Now, is that like an, uh, a more realistic uh, way of trying to play through this, uh, play through this with this character? when you're uh, when you're playing like the actual full, full version of the game or as much as the game has been released so far has, has that been uh has that been true to how this character's played i would say the rain like you're really trying to not level up to two um like willy-nilly because your two is potentially your biggest swing turn so you want to set it up and like wait for an opportune moment like the only time i'm like really going from one to two without paying out is either like my opponent's kind of diddling around and not doing a lot and I have I feel like I have enough like floating or something to push into three and, and go off anyway I'll just go into level two and then go into level three but um otherwise I'll try to probably wait around on level one as long as possible to just get the opportune moment where I can at least like ideally you want to get at least one card back when you get to level two and then uh, ideally, you want to play it on a, a dungeon guide turn because that lets you double dip her on enter effect. Because I, I don't know, I don't think a lot of people realize this, but uh, uh, champions always materialize in um, awake. So if you've attacked with Lorraine level two and you dungeon guide into level three, she comes in awake, meaning, uh, well, one, she still has the on enter stuff inherited from like the, the, the level two that you just played that turn, but. Uh, you also get to attack again, which is awesome. And this is what the benefit of using dungeon guide, correct? Because you have to materialize at the beginning of your turn. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. But there are other cases where you, even if you don't have dungeon guide, you you still would want to go to level two. A lot of people, if you're playing the demo decks, I think a lot a lot of people try to go ultra wide. Uh, if you cleave with Lorraine and hit three or four minions, like like the game's probably basically over because you just bury them in card advantage like four cards is it's crazy also like you cleared the board too so not only do you get four cards but there's all their stuff is dead um but obviously if you're playing against lorraine you, you you'll know that you'll, you'll try to pressure hit her into not get as much value out of this which is um i'll explain that i guess later in some of my card choices but yeah that's lorraine i like her she brings out weapons weapons are very flexible in what they do this one is the wind variants that I have the most uh, experience with. And I guess we should talk about some of the swords because those are like, kind of like what she's all about. So the first one is Sword of Seeking. Uh, it doesn't look too exciting, because it's, I, but it's zero cost. And it, it has two durability, which is great. It has true sight. So if you're running dream fairies or they're trying to conceal, as long as you're using the weapon in the attack, you will be able to uh, target that minion, which is pretty good. Uh, but mostly I like it for the two durability. And that's pretty big because sometimes, like the tempo, you you need to attack, but you want to have a, a, a charge on the sword in case you go to level level two and you need to be able to attack and like kill something and get the card back. So I really like starting out with Sword of Seeking. But if you're in a good spot, you can also play the Ornamental Great Sard. Only has one one uh, durability and one attack, but when it comes in and you have a minion, it will give it give one of them an additional attack for the turn, which uh, can get over certain breakpoints, which is great. And also, if you have ways of untapping your minion, I mean untap uh, awakening your minions again, um, you can double dip on that damage, which is great. Also, these are like free, so they they never hurt you. In terms of like your, your card card count, and when they go to banishment, they're counting towards your your level three, which is great. Uh, then probably one of another key sword that I keep in every single Orion deck is the Warrior's Longsword. Uh, pretty simple. It's a two attack. Well, it's one in class bonus has an extra attack, so it's two attack for if you're a warrior and two durability. Uh, two attack is just good because it clears a lot of stuff and also when you're trying to make like a, a big cleave or or you, you want to just push a big big damage or if you have like um like in the demo decks like a, a weapon smith like putting uh putting durability counters on the uh, warrior's longsword is, is definitely really good and then we have our most expensive sword you can only pull out a level three which is but it is super good called the prismatic edge 
It costs two, it has three attack, but it only has one durability. And that might sound like, okay, well, you get one good attack and it costs a lot of memory, but it has an awesome effect on it. So when it comes in, you flip over all of your memory and your opponent's memory. So if you're not the matching element, you're likely to probably get two effects out of this if they're not really careful about what they're putting down or they just have no choice in what they're putting down to pay for their cards because if you get a fire element card revealed it just does three extra damage the wind if there's a wind uh your own wind probably revealed then you get to banish a random card from their memory which is just the straight card advantage and water which doesn't come up yet uh what does it do draw a card everybody likes draw cards so Amazing card, and uh, obviously you can use this by the time you're 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 Crux Knight Lorraine. You probably have at least like two swords in the bin, so that's like minimum five damage plus whatever you get on this plus maybe an attack. So ultra strong. So uh, this one, this variant, I ran less swords than I used to run because I I felt like I, I could get there a lot of the time without running a lot. But you could definitely run more swords than this. And then, so this is already eight, eight of our 12 slots. And then to round it out, um, we have some utility. As long as we're in the two, the two uh, element sort of meta here, I always go with the fire resonance and the wind resonance bobble. Um, because just one free card uh, in this game, like, your hand size, the bigger it gets, the more options you have. So uh, keeping your hand size big is, is definitely great. Um, and actually, she has a way of paying out the one that you can't use. So definitely not as bad as in other classes. And so the one that you said you can't pay out, um, what, is, um, what is her way of uh, paying that out? Uh, so there's another Crux ally that lets you put um, some uh, a regalia back into your material deck to draw cards. So you could Got just it. pull this out for free and then just throw it back in and, Got it. and draw cards. I'm sure we'll get to that once we are over there. So, and what's yeah. the uh, the last card we have here? Uh, there's two more. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 because that was eight, so this is ten, so there's there's 12 slots. Orb of Regret, uh, it's a card I've been uh, higher and higher on. Orb of Regret is nice because if you end up with an awkward hand, there's no mulligan in this game. Uh, so having this just gives you a higher chance of hitting that, and there are sometimes you'll get into a position where cards become unplayable. Like let's say uh, you're getting later in the game, you get your five cost thing, you don't have six cards in your hand, you're never going to play it. Or um, uh, maybe like one of your allies got Dream Fairy and you can't play it again, and you have no way of cleaning the Dream Fairy, you're like, all right, well, I'll just shuffle it back in the deck and see what else I can get. So always good for consistency. And then the last one is like a safety against um, Rai. Rai is arguably the scariest champion if uh, if your opponent is taking their sweet time or, or not putting pressure on you. So you need this to try to survive that like big attack or at least like delay it a little bit so that they don't explode you for like 30 damage in one turn. Um, and this one's uh, really strong because uh, whenever your champion would take non-attack damage, this turn prevent four of that damage. And that's every instance. So if they, like for Rai, it, it they generally expend stuff to try to go off on one really huge turn. So if you can crack this in response, then they might have to like do like try to split it up over turns or something like that, or it, it might just shut them down. Uh, added bonus, this is any non-attack damage, so um, there are, there's some Lorraine cards that uh, it can block too, as long as it's not attacks. But yeah, that's the material deck. I think it's a pretty, call it, a pretty solid uh, core, and uh, we can start looking at the, the actual deck now. Safeguard, good? for those that uh, play Flight of Flesh and Blood, it seems like it is your uh, Nail Rune Armor. Uh, as well as that orb of regret reminds me in Pokemon of mm. like a, a Marnie or any kind of thing like that where you're just shuffling your hand back into your deck and then drawing X amount of cards. You seem like very mm. um very 
critical cards. That, and I, I'm going to assume that most decks are playing these cards. These two. Um, I know I'm very high on this. I definitely know people who run more aggressive lists that try to like even end the turn, end the game, like when they get to level two or, or are just more aggressively postured and they'll they'll get rid of this but i'm usually like really about consistency i want like consistency in my deck so i run a lot of these tools to just try to like shore up some of the weaknesses also when lorraine is one of the slower lorraine decks the fire ones tend to be a lot faster so uh if you're racing to kill somebody you might not need this because it's either you kill them or you are not and um I, like but win might sometimes be low damage enough that you're like i really need to survive turn it put out the damage it gets uh, pretty close usually it, when everybody gets to level three uh, let's just put that over there for now and then should we look at the attacks first i guess uh, we can look at your allies first if you like or if you would like to do attacks we can do that uh whichever you think you know what? honestly there's <laughs> i also run a very ally heavy sort of list because i think the win tools are benefit allies so uh let's talk about the allies i guess sure. so first first of all we have our uh familiar swift recruit i love swift recruit he is does he's floating memory uh lorraine if you look at I looked at her cards is very uh memory hungry because all of her weapons outside of those two starter ones cost um uh cost memory and that that third one cost two so uh you you want a lot also because you're not in fire you have no way of discarding cards so it's not like you can just put floating your memory in your bin so uh swift recruits great um against other classes that have allies that, or want to smack you really hard like lorraine um this honestly this one two does the job and will give you floating memory so i like him uh we're running four of this one in uh this version of the deck and then uh, for more floating memory allies, we have Veteran Soldier. You can see this one in the demo deck. I think this is a very strong card because a 2-3 stat line is not something you can really ignore a lot of the time. Um, it does leave you open to cards that are like efficiently like push it away or put it back in your hand or something because it costs a lot to put out. But uh, if it's your first turn, Putting out a two three pretty good because it could it might be able to retaliate and kill something or they might leave it alone, and if they kill it it's still floating memory and it's not class bonus floating memory too so you can pay for it to get into level one. I think Lorraine's one of the champions where I almost every ever like the first turn I I want to go into level one basically just to get my sword out and get my class bonuses rolling so I run three of these because. Four is a bit too much because uh, if you end up with too many of these in your hand, that you can't play them, and you generally just want to have them early. Uh, next, we have a new ally that we haven't talked about. Uh, Tactful Sergeant. Tactful Sergeant is very good in Lorraine because she has weapons. So if your champion has attacked this turn, put the top card of your deck into memory. So essentially, it has if you've attacked, draw a card, except that it's for next turn, but um cost four she doesn't put out a lot of attack but a one four is like like kind of like a stat line where your opponent's probably not good they're, they're not sure if they want to expend cards to kill it especially since it's drawn you a card so it's like it's you're not losing any 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 like cards from your hand to play it and uh if it gets buffed for any reason um it can be really annoying to get rid of so just another value generator. We also have um, Dream Fairy. Dream Fairy, this is the old one again. Um, I don't know if you have the full card list that you can I pull do, out. I do, I do. Okay, yeah, so the the, the new Dream Fairy, um, it's, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a nice trick. Uh, so you could play it, if, they're, if they have their veteran soldier, you can push it back into their memory, and then, I mean, if it was their first turn play, they literally did nothing with it, and then you get this, this creature that's kind of hard to kill. And, um, yeah, or you can push away uh, interceptors and stuff. Um, if they're Rai, maybe you can, like, screw up their, their, 
their level, their, their uh, banishing when they try to level up, because they might banish the minion. And then we have, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm running four of the Tactful Sergeant, and I'm running three of the Dream Fairy in this list. And then we have Dungeon Guide, which I talked about the other day. Uh, honestly, good in every single champion. Also great in Lorraine. Uh, but Lorraine does not want to go into level two with Dungeon Guide almost ever, unless you have some crazy situation where you just have a lot of cards and then you can do something and sweep a big board maybe on that turn and then still do something maybe. But yeah, it's mostly for going from two to three and that's in the same turn and double dipping on your, your on enter. So I only run three of them because I don't want to see more than one of them, ideally. But I do definitely want to see one. And then uh, I was trying this one out. I haven't run it that much before. Train Talk, uh, not as strong as it is in Sylvie, but a 2-2 is fine, um, especially if like it's a Lorraine. You're facing Lorraine because you'll probably be able to clear something or hit her for two, and then she has to attack it, probably, and then you can hit them for another two. Uh, or you, maybe you can play a trick to bring it back to hand, so... It's a fine minion. I have one put three in them in. Then we have... a familiar combo. I guess I should bring these both out, but I am running the Asia Protector. So the Asia Protector... Uh, not so good if you have only, like, expensive guys out, like, uh, you know, veteran, soldier, tactful sergeant and stuff. I mean, it gives you value still, but, uh, obviously it, you can't play it again and, and whatnot, but a 3-4 stat line's good, and, uh, a lot of the time you're facing, like, Lorraines and stuff, and, uh, without, if you're not playing wind, it's very, it's, like, ultra hard to get rid of your minions. Well, not ultra hard, but it's much harder to get rid of your minions. And this lets you bring back some things that you think are a little bit soft or you really want to avoid like getting swept for like three or four cards or something like that. Um, and then, so I'm running three of those and I'm running two woodland squirrels to support the Asian protector basically so I could play for free and then get like an extra damage out. Uh, the squirrels... I don't know if they were a great addition, but uh, definitely helps you smooth out playing uh, the Asia Protector. Um, and then a card that's amazing in the demo deck, the Banner Knight. Banner Knight, two costs, one three is like pretty good on stats. And then uh, when he's out and you're level two, and obviously a warrior by that point, uh, you get all your other allies and weapons get plus attack, which is really good on, especially on those turns where you want to cleave, or if they've left like some tactful sergeants sitting around, uh, the damage racks up quite quite fast if you have other stuff out. So I'm running three of them uh, because I like them, but they don't have floating memory, so they might get stuck in my hand if I feel like they'll probably just get killed or something. He's such a good combo card, though. With this character. Yeah, he is he is quite quite the good combo card. He can really enable a lot of stuff. Whoops. I'm just gonna push this over because we're gonna run out of space. The next ally we have is Gildas. Whoops. So Gildas is uh, a super strong unique ally if you can bring her out early. The reason she's amazing is because as you can see, if you're the number of cards in your hand and your memory are equal, she gets plus three attack. And I think she's extra strong in wind because wind has the tools to protect her a little bit. So the great thing about it is that your opening hand, if you go first, is seven cards. Uh, so you can, uh, based on what you materialize or not, uh, you can like basically have seven cards still on turn two if you banish one or lose one somehow, or, or just played one. Uh, and then you have a swing four, and it's got three health, which is great. And a lot of your tricks that save stuff, like uh, favorable wins or reclaim, you can still hold up at three because reclaim costs two, so that's three cards in hand would be enough to play it. And uh, favorable wins just cost one, so and they they literally cannot ignore this because if if this sticks around, four damage a turn is is huge, especially if you're like it's like turn one or two or 
something like that. So we only run two because um, if your hand's not in the right state to play her, she's dead. And uh, obviously you can't have more than one out at a time because she is a unique ally, but definitely ultra strong ally to have. Hey, Love to see it early. That's a dope card. Mm -hmm. So we got two copies of her, and then we have another demo card, Esteem Knight. So Esteem Knight, like his stat line's good, three for a two three with intercepts when you're a warrior is like generally just like efficient stats. Like two three is feels worth for three. Uh the only reason I don't like playing him sometimes is because he doesn't have floating memory, so I'm really risking losing cards by playing him. Uh but uh against like Lorraine and stuff, you really want you're really looking for your your intercepts to to block those huge attacks and a two three body is not gonna die to some like small swing by like some one two or two two. Like they actually have to commit something to it a lot of the time. So it's definitely a great defensive tool. So I run a couple of them just to up my my interceptor count because we have four of the intercept the swift recruits plus two of the Asia protector I mean three of the Asia protectors and two of this so that's like nine intercepts. So that's hopefully you'll see 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 uh see some of them when you you really need to bring uh, block that big attack. And then finally, uh, the only crux card I'm running in this deck is Ghost of Pendragon. It's very hard if you're running level three to not want to run this card because it literally does everything. It's it costs two. It's got an amazing stat line of three four for two, which is amazing. And then if you have a regalia out, which could be a sword, could be your dead wind bobble, or or a sword that's partially used. You can put it back in your material deck and draw two cards, which is huge because uh, as Lorraine, you try not, you tend to run out of cards <laughs> once you get to level three. So, and she's not like Rai who draw like a, a billion cards, and not like Sylvie who has like potentially draw two cards every turn. So, definitely helps you out. Um, but I only run two because uh, I just felt like I needed to have a lot of the other cards, and I wanted to put the pressure on earlier. And yeah, that's all the allies. So we can go into attacks, I guess. That's a lot more allies than um, the Sylvie deck, for sure. Feels and like it is. more variety, but yeah. um, it's actually my count is... Actually, my count is two more than the Sylvie, actually. So yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, two, two. Yeah, there's 34. It's like half the deck. More than half the deck. Um. There's notably less attacks in the the wind one. So the the bread and butter for every Lorraine is your Savage Slash. It's great. It's two attack, floating memory. Um, two attack might not sound exciting, but the fact that you can pressure with this, and it doesn't cost you a card essentially because you can use it to pay to get it into the higher levels or pay for your swords, is great. Also, two plus a sword is three, and a lot of minions are like three health, so. You could definitely clean up almost anything with this early. So you love to see them. I run four of them. Uh, and this in, I don't know. I don't know if, if I always run four in, in fire because fire runs a lot of attacks. But in wind, I definitely don't have as many attacks. So I'm running, I'm running a lot of these. So all four of them. And then for the next attack, we have Hurricane Sweep. Hurricane Sweep, definitely that card that really pays you off on level 2. Um, efficiency is nice, so on level 2 it's going to cost you 3 cards because it has efficiency and gets reduced by your level. So 3 for, yeah, 1 attack's not too exciting, but on level 2 it'll be 3 basically, and then plus whatever sword probably you have. And if you have a Banner Knight, maybe 5 or something. It could it could ramp up, but you could sweep away any of the small annoying creatures that they have and draw cards, which is great. And also, uh, people I think underestimate how good this card is late because let's say you're uh, Lorraine the Crux Knight and uh, you have like three in the bin. Like this is a four base power attack at that point, and it only costs two. 
and uh, if you can like really line it up and you get like you get like your prismatic edge out and you have like two in the bin and you use this, that's like that's like a six attack cleave. <laughs> that cleaves be, everything. It can be also said that this yeah, is a very strong board play too if you got it uh I don't think your opponent can um, intercept with this at all because this hits everything at once, no, right? It attacks everything. So you cannot intercept a, a cleave because it's target it, it doesn't target, it just hits everything. Uh, but there are ways to get around it. This one's definitely, you can play around it a little bit more than the fire one because it hits a little softer. Uh, so if they have like deflecting edges or favorable winds or whatever, like they can, they can definitely stop you from drawing cards. But yeah, I like it. I run three just because I don't want to see too many of them. I do like them. Well, you know what? I think that's like a, a trend. I run three of a lot of things I like, but I don't want to. I was just thinking, this card with, uh, when you get to your second level with uh, Lorraine, because on kill, right, you draw a card, you can end up just drawing like a whole bunch if the board's big enough. Yeah, so uh, Lorraine plays around that a lot. That's, uh, that's what I was saying. On your level two, it, it attacks for a lot and potentially can draw you a lot of cards, and the game can be basically over if you have like a really good sweep, um, just because you'll have like a lot of cards and then your opponent is really pressed to either like kill you quick or eventually just suffer due to having less cards. So more, uh, less especially because if you draw, if you draw aggressively like that, you can also like push into three like, like not less efficiently because you're like, oh well, I, I once you're level three, like the timer is really on because all of her attacks become huge, even just normal attacks with the sword. So. Um, I was seeing something like Dungeon Guide, so like, meaning with a Dungeon Guide, level up twice on a turn and then swing with this? Is that what you mean? Um, actually, it's usually the other way around. Usually you play this to fill your hand back up enough that you can Dungeon Guide your into level 3 and then push maybe a little bit more damage. It's, it's usually, I think, how it goes for, for both fires. I and, have and not ever played with these cards, so I'm going to just say I, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. I I definitely could see people running for I, I, um I just know that when I see like an opening hand with no floating when you see no floating memory in your opening hand as Lorraine you're like really sad especially if you have these cards which really suck when you're low level because this costs four and it does one damage which isn't gonna clear anything and it costs you a card like it doesn't come back in any way uh but we do have one value attack and that is the wind cutter wind cutter if you're a warrior gets an extra attack so it's attack for two it's kind of similar to savage slash uh and that you'll get value out of it later because uh when it hits you reveal a card from your memory uh so usually you pay for it with other wind cards and then if you reveal a wind card well they get to see what cards in your hand obviously but uh this will go into memory and then uh, next turn or you have to pay for something, and it's just two free damage. I run it there just uh, just as a one of because like there's not a lot of attacks in in this deck, and sometimes you just need something to take advantage of your your attack bonuses and stuff. And um, honestly, I'm not really looking to play it as much as Savage Slash because while it does go into your memory and you can use it to pay out, if you're paying stuff out of your memory, there's a chance you'll get rid of one of your other cards that's not Wind Cutter. And uh, Wind Cutter, if you don't hit a Wind, obviously just disappears like a normal card. And also, because it also triggers on hit, if the target disappears for some reason, uh, the attack fizzles and it dies. So you don't like that. But the Savage Slash would still be in your grave. So I do like it less than Savage Slash, but uh, we run one. And that's all the attacks. You want to talk about uh, action cards? Yes, please do. All right. So <laughs> you're seeing a theme. I run these in like every single reclaim. Reclaim, amazing. You can reclaim your Gildas. You can reclaim your annoying hawk that keeps pecking them for damage. If they actually, your dungeon guide is almost never going to be out there, honestly, to pull it back because you're almost never going to want to go from one into two with it. So. That's not really a thing, but um, it can protect anything. Even on Asian Protector, like you don't really want to return him because he's gonna 
he has to bounce something to come back in, but um, you know, at four damage, they might have to like commit cards or commit attacks partially to like do some damage, and then you can like reclaim to you know make them waste damage. It's a great card. I run four of them. There's always generally like an opportunity to play it, or even just to save your intercept to intercept another turn. Favorable wins. A nice card that you can toss to either you know get your flowing memory or potentially save something. Also at fast speed, you can kind of just hold things, and then if your opponent didn't do anything really exciting, you could just play it so it becomes floating memory, and then use the memory to to do something next turn. Very flexible. I run four of those just because uh, Lorraine really likes floating memory, and I generally try to run like as many as I can. Um. What's the next one? I run one copy of Conceal. Conceal is an interesting one because uh, it makes things, um, it makes all of your allies unable to be targeted by attack. So you can make attacks fizzle if they people try to attack them and then they gain self. Uh, obviously, if they're using um, like the uh, the level zero sword or true sight or something. I'll be able to target it. Also, this doesn't protect against spells, but you know, sometimes they're trying to like swing into your guys with other guys, and uh, this will protect your whole board and make things fizzle. So I, I just tried one copy. I really don't favor tricks that don't uh, have floating memory on them generally. Also, if they cleave, like it doesn't matter. They're, they're still gonna die. Uh, and then we have one, a tune with the winds. There is no payoff for the harmonize in this deck, so it's just literally put a buff counter on everybody, which might not sound exciting, but um, tactful sergeants tend to stick around on the board, and a 2-5 is very hard to clear, and 2 is an okay amount of damage. Uh, your Asian protectors at a 4-5 are really scary, and um, yeah, it's just if they leave anything out and the, the, the moment strikes, you can play this card. So I only just run one of, just in case. I don't know if that's the most efficient, probably not. Um, we're also running one copy of Disorienting Winds. I normally do not like Disorienting because it doesn't apply pressure, uh, but it has efficiency and you can bounce a minion with the addition of win Sylvie, uh, even as Lorraine, who could put out a lot of damage, commit a lot to try to kill like a Silverback. So if you could just put it back into their hand and then it, like get rid of buff counters or whatever, that's that's huge. And it draws you a card. So technically, it's like anti-tempo, but doesn't really lose you value. I include one finisher uh, win card, too. I guess you could say this is like kind of like a toolbox deck right now. It's just got like a lot of one ofs and three ofs and stuff. Uh, second win is a I like this card quite a bit um, because it can let you push like eight damage or, or more if you can get it on like Asian Protector or something, or if you can get it on a turn where uh, you get your ornamental great sword and put attack on stuff. So this is going to give them plus one attack and it untaps them. And the great thing about it is it's fast speed, so you can play it in response to the attack. So you can basically add the attack to the first attack and then untap and then attack again. So pretty scary, can close out games. And uh, if you remember, we also have Gildas in the deck. So, I mean, the stars really have to align for this to happen. But if they left your Gildas live for some reason, and then you can play a second win and turn this on, like you attack for. 10 that turn. Like, that's disgusting. Um, gross. Yeah, really gross. And then we have Deflecting Edge. Deflecting Edge, just a very efficient defensive card. Allows you to save your allies or save yourself if you're going to take, like, a big lethal hit. Um, very clutch, but also, you know, doesn't give you any value back. So uh, I only run two of them because I I feel good to have one and the option to play one, but uh, if I get a bunch of them, I, I'm really not putting pressure, especially if I have a hand of like favorable wins, reclaim, deflecting edge, second wind, and like a one-two. It's like kind of sad. 
Um, so we run two of those for defense, and we have Inspire Call as a three of because we have a lot of little things that people might leave on the board, like Dream Fairy, because they're annoying to get rid of. Swift Recruits, if they're not intercepting, people sometimes they know Lorraine likes floating memory, so they're like, oh, I'll just leave it on the way to punish them for it. Uh, it doesn't really cost you a card because you're attacking a lot of the time, so it's a lot of the time a one for a plus one on everybody, and you get the card back, so just just a good card. And then finally, we have one copy of Fairy Whispers. Um, depending on how much stuff I try to fit in the deck, I'll run it a lot but I'm only running one because I couldn't find the space. But it is nice because wind has the deck speed of wind, wind decks tend to be lower than fire because they cycle cards slower. This is a way to get rid of some of those annoying cards that you don't want to see. Like if you don't have allies, you don't want these tricks. So you get rid of them. Or if you have too many deflecting edges or you get your extra, you see your extra dungeon guides and you already have one, you could just get rid of them. And that. I think covers the entire deck. Well, that has been um, a big eye opener. Uh, this is not the the demo deck we we played before. There's already a lot of win stuff, and I'm starting to see that you might be the win master. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it's, that's it's pretty good for me. Uh, yeah, well, that's good. Um, I'm hoping to see uh, this or the uh, other deck you had there, the uh, mm -hmm, Sylvie mm -hmm. deck uh, in the not too distant future. And hopefully we can mm -hmm. get a play mat over to you and have you come down and play at the store and flex with both of these decks. Um, <laughs> it could be uh, quite the learning experience for the, uh, the fine people here. Um, but I want to take this time to, so, to thank, uh, thank you, Forty, for coming and... Uh, showing off your, your deck um I, no think, I think there's so much uh there's there's so many questions i have but a lot of it i think e e equates down to you know i gotta i would have to just sit here test the deck out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's so much going on what yeah and not. that's that's one thing i really like about this game is that um sometimes when you're like you know playing like magic or something like because your 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 land card you have land cards like you only have the ability to play three cards and like maybe you can like think about what you're drawing in your deck but because all of your cards are playable you can really think about like like you know what card can I safely put down into memory what am I gonna materialize and it can really screw you over sometimes you might be like oh yeah it's a one in yeah and then you lose your dungeon guide and then you're like oh shit I should have just held that one. So, so, is there any traps? Sorry, just before we end here, that uh, some people playing a Lorraine deck like this might fall into that they should uh, try to avoid. Just uh, so we can um, jump that. I would say some really big traps, uh, especially for newer players, is playing your uh, not floating memory cards or cards that don't recycle them, like recycle themselves like early and like, expose them and just be like, turn one, I play a Steam Knight. Let's say right, like a Steam Knight. That's like four cards out of your hand. So you have three left, and then you just have a two, three. It's not going to help you get into level one, so you'll probably have to leave to get on. And like, is a two, three going to do a lot? Like if they have like a veteran soldier per se, right? Like they only need to do one damage and they kill this, and then you're just down a card. You didn't do anything with it, essentially. So you really got to be careful about playing, like committing cards that, uh, uh, can lose you like card advantage early and also people being too happy about dungeon guide and throwing it down for the level two just so they can get like an extra attack when really like you really want to spike your level two into level three or, or maybe not even dungeon guide at all if it if it just doesn't line up mm -hmm. so yeah be very careful about your dungeon guides be very careful about when you're not playing floating memory because your swords cost a lot and um yeah i mean i guess it's like a less of an issue for this if you're playing the fire lorraine which is more they have a lot of very efficient cards and uh reducing your hand size early is not great because like, you're like oh yeah i'm putting a lot of damage but as long as you retain the cards in hand you can still you can still like play them on a later turn so you could just have a bigger turn later if you just hold the cards and make like efficient plays early so that you can set up to have enough cards to make your big push for 
whatever, 20 damage in a turn. So. Well, thank you so much. And once again, um, I look forward to, uh, you know, at least showing you the team here and saying, hey, this is what these top Lorraines are doing. But uh, <laughs> aside from that, um, you know, hopefully we, we get we can uh, sit down here again and have um, have a look at uh, maybe the different path. I think it's the fire one with uh, Lorraine and see yeah. what you uh, come up with that. Otherwise, um, thank you so much. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. everyone kind of from the last video knows where to find you. And uh, yep. uh, will we have a, a, the deck in the, the the list below? You don't have to do, decide if you want to do that. If you want to keep this set tech. Oh, I already put this on the Discord, so you know. And I talk. You can uh, uh, I can give you the uh, the link for it or the the Sylvie dot org Sounds good. list, and it'll it'll uh, you guys can pull it up and uh, test it out for yourself and see if you think my build sucks or not. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, thank you so much, and I uh, let it go here uh, and. Uh, Look forward to seeing uh, how you do this Friday. All right. Thank you. Take care.